Hi, welcome to the update from Antarctica. Marcel and I are at sea and I'm with Dr. Robert Davies. He's a professor at Utah State University, a quantum physicist, quantum optics, That's right. and, the, um, and also a, uh, a systems observer. He has been um, really at the forefront of getting us the science and the facts of what's happening with climate change, how it's impacting species, Dr. Davies, it's a pleasure to be with you today. Well, lovely to be talking with you, Alberto. Yes. Thank you. Can you share with us some of the some of the data, some of the numbers that you shared, of what the state of the earth is, where we're at today, and what's happening to our species, to our animals? Right. So you know, it's it, as you know when you deal in this whole systems approach, uh, this sort of um, suite of ecological and social challenges, upheavals, crises that we now inhabit. It's a real challenge to communicate to people the scope of this. And so there are kind of, uh, that said, there are a few data bits for each piece of it uh, that I tend to focus on to help people orient people. Certainly with climate change is one piece of this, this suite of crises. And uh, there are so many numbers that one can talk about. But uh, with a um, threshold of 350 parts per million of carbon in the atmosphere, as something of a tipping point identified from paleoclimate data, we're now at 420 parts per million, so that tells us that we've already crossed certain thresholds that threaten to push the climate state into a very different state than it's been in for millions of years. These, are, these are the tipping points, huh? That's right. Yeah. And there are a couple of dozen tipping points, uh, but one of them certainly has been identified uh, as a metric is the level of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, so I'll typically talk about that. So we're well above. Uh, the level where we were, which was was 350 parts per million, um, well, 280 parts per million, but 300, the last time the Earth was above 350 parts per million for any kind of time geologically, let's call it a few centuries, uh, this was an ice-free planet. Mm. Uh, and sea levels were a couple of hundred feet higher. Uh, now, so, of course, so even the ice yeah. here in Antarctica where we are was melted, huh? That's right. There were forests uh, here. Antarctica was ice free and there were forests here. Locked up in the ice in West Antarctica, where we are now, is something on the order of 20 to 25 feet of sea level rise. The much bigger East Antarctica locked up there, something on the order of 120 feet of sea level of rise. Of sea level rise. That's wow. right. So, uh, so we're talking about. So that's uh, a, a number for climate change. And then if you want to say, well, we don't want to cross any more tipping points, we want to stop changing the climate. We need to peak our carbon emissions and bring them back down to zero. Uh, where are we in terms of danger zone tipping points? The world scientific community has said we don't want to go above one and a half degrees Celsius of global average warming above the pre-industrial temperatures. We've already warmed 1.2 degrees. That Most of that's been in the last 30 years. Mm. Um, so we're very close to this, this line where scientists have identified is once you Cross, the risks start to increase dramatically and very quickly. And so, for example, marine biologists tell us if we if we go beyond 1.5 to say 2 degrees Celsius of warming, we can expect to lose essentially all of the Earth's coral reefs. All of the coral reefs, wow. fundamentally that's, transforming. And that's the the basis of the entire life chain in the ocean. In the oceans, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So. There are certainly many, many more numbers, pieces of data we could talk about with climate change. Um, and certainly it's worth saying, uh, you know, that was sort of for a globally catastrophic unfolding events moving forward. We want to avoid that. But that's not to say there aren't people uh, today, in places today, that have already experienced catastrophic climate change. Yeah. Uh, and so when the what we talk about on this global scale, it goes from being in some places to some people some of the time to all places, all people, all of the time. So it's, we have to act. I mean, this is not something we can kick the can down the road anymore. This is, we are in crisis. And, I, and some of us, so many of us are slipped so easily into denial. You know, oh, it's not my problem. I'm still comfortable. I can't see it around me. So the, um, it's time to wake up, huh? Well, certainly, and um, you hit on a problem that's that's uh, uh, certainly endemic to, for example, those of us on this ship, mm -hmm. uh, as we sit here, that we, we intellectually understand the problem. It's a pretty straightforward scientific story, climate change. 
and all of our associated crises, the biodiversity collapse, um, hyper inequity in our social systems, hyper unsustainability, deep unsustainability of our food system, our energy system, most of all our economic system, mm -hmm. from which all of this is emergent. Um, but we can understand that story, which is not a difficult scientific story when it's distilled to its essence. But then um, we walk out into our everyday lives and they are, most for most of us, very good lives. We yeah. have good jobs, we have good incomes, we live in beautiful places, we have access to health care, to retirement accounts, to um, uh, two-week voyages the comforts of life. Yeah. in Antarctica. Yeah. And so it can be difficult uh, even when you intellectually understand something to really uh, take it in. I sometimes refer to it, and I stole this from uh, a fabulous uh, visual artist, Jan Arthus Bertrand, who sometimes says, we know these things, but now it's time for us to believe what we know. Mm. Which I think what he means is behave as though they're true. Really 